Part 2 of Empyrean has finally arrived, and with it, an avalanche of things to do with this behemoth of a content drop. With a massive change in overall direction, one would be surprised to hear people are finding it hard to acclimatize to this shift of what is, in essence, an entirely new game within a game. That's a game exception for you folks. So, to help all you lovely lot, this video is going to be the bare bones beginner friendly video, going over all the baseline information you'll need to get in and give it a go yourself. It doesn't matter whether you have your own or not, we're just going to cover all the information that a beginner would need to know, from being a crew member to a captain, to make the most out of this awesome content. There is however a lot to cover, so we're going to try and keep it concise and to the point. No typical Makari levels of humour for this video. Sorry. So sit back, put on a top hat, and join the dappery that is the top hatter's guide to Railjack. As a quick disclaimer, the Imperium is really new, so a lot of this information is subject to change. If anything major does change from this video, then I'll be sure to link it in the description or make a new video covering all the changes. And if you're looking for, to learn more about building your own Railjack, please be sure to check out our previous videos like how to build your Railjack and all that other stuff. I can assure you that the next few videos we're uploading, and probably for the near future, are all going to be Railjack related in some way or another as we get ready for the future content that Warframe brings us. So first things first, to board your railjack, you can either do it through your the menu whilst in your lander, or go to the lower deck of the lander and use the newfound Jeffrey's tube leading up into the railjack itself. Alternatively, you can go to the clan do dojo and enter manually through the sides of the dry dock. If you don't have your own railjack and you're just looking to join up with a band of space pirates looking to plunder some booty, and definitely not leave within five seconds of not finding the sentient fortress, <clears throat> then you just need to use the shiny new Railjack site symbol on your overmap when you're in your lander. This button will then assign you a group of people that will already have a captain to them. Bear in mind, you will cannot be the captain until you have your own Railjack. Now, assuming you've built your Railjack, or heck, even if you haven't and you're playing public or with friends, one of the first things you're going to want to take into consideration is to acclimatize yourself with the layout of your Railjack. So take a look around, familiarize yourself with everything there is, as there is a lot going on with it within the ship itself that you'll need to pay attention to, as well as also the layout should you maybe get some borders or if there are repairs needed. There are three levels and all of which have relevant tubes that allow you to exit out into the outside area as well as also boarding back into it. There's also a arsenal and some other fancy stuff as well like guns and a foundry and it's all worthwhile taking into consideration when running around your railjack. Now let's take a look what we can put on our Railjack that can define our gameplay. Keep in mind, I'm probably going to make some separate videos about all this sort of stuff that goes into a bit more detail about the individual elements of the actual weapons and the, the houses and everything else. So don't overburden yourself with too much information now. Just take the bare fundamentals I'm going to be dishing out to you and then use that to initialize yourself with the Railjack. One of the most important things to note right off the bat is that you have something called houses for your equipment and weaponry. These houses are the Zetki, the Vidar, and the Levan. In short, these houses all give different priorities to your weapons. So you can have the same weapon, but they will have a different house, and that house will define the attributes of that weapon or bit of equipment. We can delve into these individual trees later, but for the time being, it's worth having a little look at them to see which one you would want to go with initially. And we'll look at them in a bit more depth later in our setup guide. It's probably worth mentioning that there are some meta, quote unquote, weapons and such out there. But much like your frames, unless you're planning on being super anal, <laughs> about it. The important thing for a beginner is that you just level your items up. Don't overcomplicate things initially with houses and such until you got to grips with the base fundamentals. Otherwise, this will all seem very confusing than it needs to be. So let's move on and have a look at how to set up your own railjack. Starting with your components, here you will start with a baseline shield array, engine, and reactor. Just to point out that you want to replace these as soon as possible, as these initial components are pretty damn terrible. The different tiers of components and weapons can all be obtained by playing the missions for Railjack. Tier 1 coming from Earth, Tier 2 coming from Saturn, and Tier 3 coming from the Vale Proxima. There's more to go into with these houses and level of items, but that's for a separate video. All you need to know is as beginner, higher tier equals better. 
The shields and engine are quite self-explanatory, the shields boosting your shield recharge rate and the overall shields your, la your railjack can have. The engines affecting your overall speed and boost speed and speed efficiency. And probably one that needs a bit more explaining is the reactor. The reactor will affect your flux capacity and avionics capacity, which will essentially dictate how many mods or quote-unquote avionics you can equip. See this as the capacity would be for, for your frame modding. So improving this should be a priority. Then to the tab to the right of that, you have your weapons. You have a forward weapon and a side weapon, which will take the spot of both side cannons. Optimizing these comes down to personal preference, and all weapons are good at something. It's just down to personal preference, realistically speaking here. And I'll likely make a video about optimizing damage in the future, so don't worry your little head about it. Then you have the artillery spot, which is a, your special component, kind of like a special toy, that can fire special types of munitions based on what you equip. Keep in mind these do require you to forge ammunition for them, either from this console or from the forge mid-mission. Then our next tab over is your avionics, and this in my mind is the most important tab you want to focus on initially. Avionics, as mentioned, are essentially the modding of your railjack, and at a glance this page will look confusing as all hell. My god, it was confusing to hell to me even when I first picked it up. So let's break this into segments and help you get down to it. On the right, is the integrated segment. This is the core modding of the ship. The avionics that go here will affect your overall ship stats and effects, and ranging from weapon damage to hull integrity. So in essence, this is where you'll want to focus first, as this will be the core foundation of your railjack. Then below that, you have your quote-unquote tactical segment. These avionics are in essence the passive and support elements that can benefit your team. And the final tab down to the bottom left is the battle tab. These are the active abilities your ship can use during a mission. Keeping in mind that some of these will use energy, and if they, if you end up running out of energy, you will need to recharge it, utilizing something from your foundry that we'll explain in a moment. So we have the core layout down, but it gets better. Now look at the bottom and we have a little sign called Grid in Avionics. The Grid tab allows you to use Dirac to upgrade the nodes themselves. Once a node is upgraded, it improves the potency of avionics installed into that tab. This is the priority Definitely prioritize upgrading the grid first, as this will improve any avionic you put in there. So even if something is a lower tier, it can essentially be higher potency right off the bat. Then the avionics tab allows you to directly upgrade the mods or the avionics. Uh, every time something is upgraded, it will then cost more and more Dirac. So you'll see this Dirac as the endo of your railjack. So in priority, upgrade the grid, then use the avionics tab to upgrade the avionics themselves. Keeping in mind that there are also separate tiers of avionics, much like your weapons. So as you go through the star chart of the railjack, you'll get better and more potent avionics to upgrade and improve. But obviously, the higher tier they are, the more they're going to cost in capacity. And well, essentially, you're going to need a better reactor or a more efficient reactor to install them all. You will very quickly find that in the early stage, you're not going to equip that many until you can get a better reactor. And much like housing, it's a very hard-pressed thing to find a decent one. Or at least one that doesn't have a friggin' hole in the wall spewing water on it. <clears throat> anyway, get a better reactor so you can create more avionics. And upgrade your avionics, but only after you've upgraded the grid. That's the TLDR here. The next tab to that is the payload. Seeing as it'll save time, we can tie this into the foundry on board your ship as well. In this, you will use the resources collected to produce resources that will aid you in your battles. The Revelite will power your Omni, which is used to repair your ship, put out fires, and all those other things that will basically save your ship from imploding in a catastrophic failure, and can also be used to then teleport back to your railjack when you're out in a mission itself. The Flux Energy is then used to re-energize your ship, after using battle abilities. The munitions and dome charges are used for the relevant artillery and ordnance abilities. When in a mission, you will have the ability to refine the materials you have collected. Do not do this as refining will cause the available resources you have collected to be banked to the end rewards tab, which is great, but then that leaves you with nothing to use for any further crafting during a mission. And I see people doing this a lot in public games within the first few bloody seconds. Don't refine, you crazy <clears throat> sausage. Uh, refining should be saved until the end, that way you can have a bank of resources within the mission to craft things on the fly, especially if you need to repair and produce more ordnance. Intrinsics are kind of like the spec, if you will. There are currently four traits available, tactical, piloting, and gunnery, and engineering, each focusing on improving elements of how you interact with your railjack in missions. 
Command right now is grayed out as it's a future intrinsic which will focus on solo play and recruiting additional NPCs to fill in the roles of people you may not have brought with you for whatever reason. Uh, we'll look more about this when it's actually released. And I will be making a video on the depths of these individually, but for simplicity's sake, the name of the intrinsic is pretty self-explanatory as to what it benefits. Earning intrinsics is done much like affinity in missions. The higher level mission you do, the more intrinsic points you earn for killing enemies, repairing and completing objectives. All, all of these will then earn you points towards this, so the higher level mission you do, the more you repair, the more you make in a mission of the intrinsics. Once you start spending these intrinsics, the cost will double after every level. So in the beginning, you can quite easily get all four talents to level four rather quickly. But you'll quickly find that that it'll be worth specializing to make appropriate use of your points you're earning. But getting these talents to level 4 or 5 will give you the, all the necessities you're going to need to make full use of your railjack, and will cover the, what I would consider to be the quote-unquote mandatory elements before you then br uh, branch out and specialize into things that you would like to focus on. My recommendation for comfort of life after you've got them to level 4 is to get gunnery to level 8 for the immense boost to Arcwing potency, then engineering to 8 to complement that, and then push gunnery to 10 for the Mesa-like aimbotting with your guns, and then after that, the world your oyster. But really, here it's all about personal preference. You will eventually get these all to level 10 anyway, and then your railjack will be a monster that no one can destroy. Currently, Railjack has three nodes and also your dry dock. The star chart itself is pretty cyclical, leading you from the Earth Proxima, which will be the first node of missions you'll be going towards, which will mostly include go here and kill X amount of enemies. The Earth Proxima then dropping Mark 1 avionics and equipment. And it's worth noting that whether this is just a bouncing issue or not, but the enemies you fight on foot during these missions, such as borders or crewmen, are significantly tougher than their normal counterparts from regular missions outside of the Railjack star chart. I often found level 50 enemies here were as tough as fighting level 80 or 90 enemies in regular missions, so keep this in mind and don't underestimate the foot soldiers because they will absolutely murder you horribly. The second node is Saturn Proxima and needs at least one of your intrinsics of level 3 or higher to start, and is the mid-tier with a lot more enemies needing to be killed for the objective, and then additionally giving you a boarding objective to destroy or to kill, most of these objectives are similar in scope, usually asking to board a station of some kind, destroy some stuff, or hack some stuff inside. Sometimes it'll even ask you to have a couple outside to destroy things that you expose from the inside. Saturn is the ad uh, then additionally drops the Tech 2 items and gear, and really will be your first test of how efficiently you're making your railjack. And last for the time being is Veil Proxima, which requires you have at least one intrinsic le of level 7 or higher, and is currently the quote-unquote end game. Even the first missions here will test you to see if you have specced and leveled your gear properly. Most of these missions will ask you to kill uh, at least 90 attack ships and 6 crew ships. You can still do this even if you are underleveled if you take things slowly, utilizing the methods I'll be showing in a solo guide in the future. This is also the map that will have the new sentient fortress show up as well. Every few hours a node in the veil will glow red. This is then the map that will have the fortress spawn in, allowing you to farm the sentience for the new weapon components, and additionally get access to the new quest error. The Veil Proxima is also the place that drops tier 3 avionics and gear, and is where you should focus your farming to better your standards of your ship. I can imagine these places will expand on in the future with more varying mission types, and as we already know from Tenocon, Recorpus missions will eventually be a thing as well. But who knows what else this game may or, or may not provide us in the future. There have been talks of ship-to-ship -ship PvP, multi-ship raids, and so much more. I'd like to know your opinions in the comments below as to what kind of game mode you would like to see with Railjack, because honestly, this mode could have infinite possibilities depending where DE decide to take it. Of course, all these missions can be handled by utilizing the guns on your Railjack, but if you feel like spicing things up a little bit and utilizing the synergy of arc wings and your arc guns, then you can leave your ship and get out there and deal with the ships on a one-to-one -one basis. Realistically, in the early stage of Earth and Saturn, it is actually easier to kill the enemy with a half-decent modded arc gun than it is in your railjack. So utilizing this can definitely be a benefit, but I would recommend that by the time you get to Veil Proxima, you rely more on your railjack, as the enemy's ships will be hitting like an absolute truck during the Veil. For your setup, at least for the time being, the best arc queen to go with is Amisha. It allows you to be immortal with your one, 
with a similar thing to Rhino's Iron Skin. Your two is a protective bubble that can protect your Railjack. Your three is an effective slow that can allow your turrets to lock onto enemies easier. And your four turns all damage dealt to you into regenerated energy, assuming your one and your three are turned off. As for the weapon, use what you enjoy. My personal recommendation is the Imperator slash Imperator Vandal, or the Syngus. But whichever weapon you choose, I'd suggest modding for radiation and cold damage, as it, is, as it is currently the most effective combo to use as it affects Grenier targets the best. And then just mod to the focus of the weapon you're using. We'll cover more of this in our in-depth guide we were mentioning earlier that we do at a later date, but... You know, for the time being, just be known that as of right now, combined elements don't really have a status effect that does much to the ships themselves, like they do in normal missions. Heat, toxin, cold, electric, all will affect the enemy ships in one manner or another that is far more effective. The choice of frame can be important as well. However, this is something that can have a lot of detail because a lot of frame abilities and frame passives can actually affect the Railjack itself, at least for right now, unless they decide to patch it out at some point. So we'll probably make a bit more of an in-depth analysis into this during the in-depth setup guide we do in the future. But my recommendation for the time being are tanky frames. Frames that have the ability of soaking a lot of damage, simply for the fact that the enemies on board enemy ships, as well as the stations, are going to hit you like an absolute truck. Additionally, Hildren's passive does also affect your arc wing as well, which can really add to your soaky survivability. Uh, certain frames like Wisp and Rhino can have their abilities also affect your Railjack's guns as well. So that's a brief overview of Railjack, how to get into it, what you're looking at, and how to really get the most out of your initial endeavors into Railjack. Hopefully this guide has been somewhat helpful to you, and if it has, do make sure you leave a like, share it with your friends, maybe even subscribe down below. And if you feel like joining the awesome content you've seen on screen, and join in with the fellow uh, top hatters that were helping me with this video, then please use the link down below to join us in our future streams that we'll have on Twitch. And again, I will hopefully see all of you top hatters in the next video. Hurrah!